Very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Let us start the news bulletin with the top headlines. State set for seventh and final phase of Lok Sabha polls of 59 seats across seven states and Union Territory of Chandigarh to vote tomorrow. Over 700 companies of paramilitary forces in West Bengal in wake of poll violence. Prominent candidates include Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the fray. Center issues advisory to six drought-hit states, urges Maharashtra, Gujarat, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Tamil Nadu to use water judiciously. Water shortage storage available in 91 major reservoir across the country at 22%. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on a two-day tour to Uttarakhand to offer prayers at the holy shrines of Kedarnath and Badrinath. will also review reconstruction projects in Kedarnath. Bhutpurnima Purnima being celebrated across the country. President, Vice President and Prime Minister greet the nation on the occasion, marking the Lord Buddha's birth anniversary. Say, Buddha's message of non-violence, peace and compassion will continue to inspire people. And voting underway in Australia to elect a new parliament, are polling 450 members of the House of Representatives and 76 seats of the Senate. Incumbent Prime Minister Scott Morrison leading a centre-right coalition pitted against a Labour candidate Bill Shorten. It's set uh, for the seventh and final phase of Lok Sabha polls to be held tomorrow. 59 constituencies across seven states and Union Territory of Chandigarh will vote in the seventh phase on 19th of May. Over 1,12,000 polling stations uh, are in place for the smooth conduct of the polls. Over 10 crore voters will see the fate uh, of uh, 918 candidates in this phase. The polling will take place uh, at uh, 13 seats each in UP and Punjab, 9 seats in West Bengal, 8 seats each in Bihar and Madhya Pradesh. Also voting in this phase uh, are the states of Himachal Pradesh where voting will take place in all the four Lok Sabha seats, 3 seats in Jharkhand and 1 seat in Chandigarh. Talking about the key candidates in this phase, uh, they are Prime Minister Narendra Modi who is seeking a re-election from Varanasi seat. Several union ministers are also in the fray, including Manoj Sinha from Ghazipur, Anupriya Patel from Mirzapur, Ravi Shankar Prasad from Patna Sahib, Ram Kripal Yadav from Patliputra, R.K. Singh from Ara, Hardeep Singh Puri from Amritsar, Harsimrat Kaur Badal from Bhatinda, and Ashwini Kumar Chaube from Baksar. And other prominent faces in this phase are Shatrugan Sinha from Patna Sahib contesting on a Congress ticket. Former Union Minister Upendra Kushwaha, former Lok Sabha Speaker Meera Kumar, Lalu Prasad Yadav's daughter Misa Bharti and actor Sunny Deol. And in the wake of incidents of poll violence in West Bengal, the Election Commission has ordered heavy deployment of the central forces in the state to ensure free and fair polls. Now, a total of uh, 710 companies of the central forces are being deployed by the Election Commission to ensure free and fair polls in West Bengal. Earlier, Election Commission had curtailed campaigning in the state for the seventh phase by almost a day. Campaigning in West Bengal ended at 10 p.m. on 16th of May, while for all the other states, it ended at 5 p.m. on 17th of May. All right, our colleagues are joining us from the ground. They're getting us all the election-related updates. We have with us Navikram Singh joining us from Indore in Madhya Pradesh. Also, Kriti Mishra is joining us from Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh. Anu Devan is joining us from Kolkata. And Akhilesh Suman is also joining us from Bihar's Patna Sahib. Let's first go to 
uh, Navikram, who is joining us uh, from Indore. Uh, in, uh, Navikram, we have been talking about the fact that how of the eight constituencies that are going to polls in the seventh phase in Madhya Pradesh, of course, all eyes are going to be Indore, which is a traditionally BJP uh, seat. Uh, but this time, Sumitra Mahajan is not contesting. But uh, speaking about the other seats uh, in this particular phase, uh, uh, all eyes, of course, are also going to be on the Ratlam and the Mansour seats. बिल्कुल ऐश्वर्या इंदौर के अलावा अगर बाकी सीटों पर भी यहां पर बात करें तो ये पूरा इलाका अगर जो निमाड़ और मालवा रीजन में आता है और निमाड़ और मालवा में खास तौर पर कई सीटों पर बीजेपी बहुत लंबे अरसे से काबिज रही है पिछली बार अगर हम उपचुनाव में देखें बीजेपी ने जरूर यहाँ पर सीट खोई थी लेकिन इन पूरी आठों सीटों पर 2014 में बीजेपी का कब्जा था इससे पहले कि अगर चुनावी इतिहास पर गौर करें तो जनसंघ के जमाने से यहाँ पर बीजेपी ने अपनी दमदार मौजूदगी दर्ज की है ऐसे में हाल ही में हुए विधानसभा चुनाव में कांग्रेस ने यहाँ बेहतर प्रदर्शन किया था इससे पहले रतलाम में उपचुनाव में कांग्रेस ने जीत दर्ज की थी लोकसभा में तो ऐसे में कांग्रेस की कोशिश है कि अपने जो जनाधार को है वो बढ़ाया जा सके वहीं बीजेपी ने एक विशेष रणनीति तैयार की है जिसके तहत यहाँ के जो जो नाराज नेता हैं जिस तरीके से पहले खबरें आई थी कि यहाँ जो पूर्व मंत्री मध्य प्रदेश सरकार में थी अर्चना चिटनेस और पूर्व प्रदेश अध्यक्ष जो खंडवा से चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं नंद कुमार उन दोनों के बीच में आपस में गुटबाजी है मनमुटाव है ऐसे कई इलाकों में उन्होंने जो भारतीय जनता पार्टी का आला कमान है और प्रदेश नेतृत्व तो है वो उसने लगातार कोशिश की है कि इस गुटबाजी को खत्म किया जाए और ये इसका असर भी देखने को मिला दोनों ने एक मंच पर आकर रैली संबोधित की और कार्यकर्ताओं को संबोधित किया साथ ही पूर्व मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान लगातार पिछले दिनों से यहाँ के इस पूरे इलाके के दौरे पर आ रहे हैं तो कोशिश है कि बीजेपी का जो घटा हुआ वोट बैंक जिस वोट बैंक में सेंध लगाई थी कांग्रेस ने उस वोट बैंक को एक बार फिर पाया जा सके वहीं कांग्रेस यहाँ पर अपनी जमीन को बनाने की कोशिश में है कांग्रेस की कोशिश है कि क्योंकि प्रदेश में उनकी सरकार है ऐसे में प्रदेश के मंत्रियों को जिम्मेदारी दी गई है कि यहाँ ज्यादा से ज्यादा जनाधार को बढ़ाया जा सके तो देखना दिलचस्प होगा कि राज्य सरकार के नेतृत्व वाली कांग्रेस पर भरोसा जताती है यहाँ की जनता या फिर परंपरागत रूप से बीजेपी को ही वोट देती है uh akilesh we have been discussing about uh, in length uh, the uh, you know the contest that is on in uh, patna sahib which is one of the eight constituencies that is going to polls tomorrow uh, and we have been speaking about the fact how this uh, is a uh, the most uh, keenly watched contest in the entire seventh phase ravi shankar prasad who is contesting election for the first time is uh, contesting against uh, sitting uh, shatrugan sinha of the congress party now but uh, let, let's now speak about the rest of the eight uh, lok sabha constituencies that are going to polls in this phase tell us more about them right uh, it's a very interesting contest i can tell you that uh, these eight constituencies in bihar in this phase are very prominent you can say it that uh, cabinet ministers phase is there because four sitting cabinet ministers are fighting in this phase right from ravishankar prasad to rajkumar singh to aswini chobe and uh, you know that uh, uh, fifth person is upendra kuswaha who was a union cabinet minister in nda time but before election he switched to grand alliance so this phase is really in uh, interesting uh, if i can say you that ram ke pal yadav is one of the four cabinet minister sitting cabinet minister who is fighting election against misha bharti uh, who is you know lalu prasad yadav's daughter and this uh, constituency is interesting because you know that in last election uh, rjd did not get any support from anywhere but this time they are getting support from cpi ml you know that cpi ml also has a uh, you know around 80000 to 1 lakh voters in the last election so rjd is uh, fighting very tough against ram kripal yadav but given the fact that in last election jdu was not with bjp but this time jdu is with, with the bjp so they also have a qualitative uh, addition in their own coffers so uh, this seat is very prestigious for both nda and also lalu prasad yadav's clan future and also the grand alliance future other than that i can say you the rajkumar singh 
who is the who was the union home minister who hails from here and also he is the union minister you know renewable energy and people say that he has done tremendous work uh, but given the fact that the type of polarization has taken place in our constituency the same cpi ml is getting support from rjd here so in patna cpi ml is supporting you know rjd and in ara cpi ml is getting support from rjd All so right. it is very you know unique combination that once upon a time Uh, all the CPI ML six, uh, you know, uh, assembly candidates of uh, CPI ML, which was IPF at that point mm. of time, who had switched to RJD, mm. and uh, that was, uh, you know, for IPF it was, was grand zero. All and right. now the same RJD and CPI ML has, uh, mm. you know, aligned together to get mm. the maximum number of voters. So the two constituencies are very, very interesting in this time. All Other right. than that, if you go to Aswini Chowbe, who is fighting from Baksar, hmm. you know Aswini Chowbe also is known to be, you know, a very, you know, famous candidate here. Yes. But he is also getting very, very strong, hmm. uh, you know, uh, contest from Grand Alliance. Hmm. Other than that, if you go to Sasara Mira Kumar, who was the Uh, former you know speaker of lok sabha is right. also fighting very well and uh, uh, B bjp nd alliance is also giving very good contest to them so the the main issues that are cropping up in bihar you know that bihar has uh, got uh, enough infrastructure as far as roads electricity is concerned law and order is also very good hmm. but now people have gone into greater discourses they are asking for uh, employment opportunity because you know that lots of uh, People, Indeed, and so that is, Bihar, of course, oh, in, from, employment, of course, is going to be a big issue in Bihar. Uh, but what is happening in Uttar Pradesh? Uh, we'll uh, go across uh, to Kriti Mishra, who is joining us from Varanasi. Kriti, as far as uh, the final phase of uh, Lok Sabha elections are concerned, this is uh, said that UPs, uh, this phase is, of course, one of the most uh, Uh, interesting and uh, most important as well uh, because uh, not only the because of the fact that the number of uh, key uh, political big wigs of course pm modi is uh, there mahindra singh pandey is there manoj sinha is there anupriya patel is there but at the same time the very fact that uh, these seats 13 seats were won by the bjp uh, last time but uh, the we saw what happened in gorakhpur uh, as well uh, so uh, give us a sense of the entire 13 seats that are going to polls in the last phase Absolutely, Ashwarya. Now, UP will vote for the penultimate phase of the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. Of course, people have been terming Varanasi as a battle royale, but many political pundits here say that it's not really a battle for Prime Minister Modi, who is seeking second term from Varanasi. And many say it's going to be cakewalk uh, for him, or it's a foregone conclusion that he will win this Varanasi seat. But uh, the BJP has left no stone unturned to ensure that the victory margin increases. And of course, uh, the SP, BSP, and RLD combined, and also the Congress, they have also tried to put in all efforts to give tough fight to Prime Minister Modi. Talking about uh, the other seats, of course, Gorakhpur, which is considered the fiefdom of Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath in 2018 by polls, Gorakhpur did give a setback uh, to the BJP, wherein it lost uh, the by poll, and Praveen Nishad of the Nishad Party. one but since then a lot of dynamics have changed because uh, nishad party has joined hands uh, with the bjp and in fact praveen nishad is contesting from sant kabir nagar there are several other important seats for instance gazipur and also mirzapur uh, from where union ministers uh, manoj sinha and also nupriya patel are in fray but remember these seats also they are uh, the combined of uh, sp and bsp they are hoping to give oppose a very tough challenge because they are banking on the caste arithmetic the bjp is focusing on the developmental works taken up in these constituencies another important constituency is of course going to be chandoli uh, from where a bjp state president mahindra nath pande is in fray there also the sp bsp combined that is focusing on the caste arithmetic while the congress party is also trying to resurrect itself in eastern uttar pradesh and particularly the onus lies on the shoulders of congress general secretary for eastern uttar pradesh priyanka gandhi yes. who has campaigned extensively in this region we've seen her road shows uh, in varanasi in mirzapur and also kushinagar kushinagar particularly is extremely important for the congress party from where former mos home rpn singh is contesting so several high profile seats and now the people of uttar pradesh will seal the fate of the candidates around 167 candidates in this last phase and the most crucial one of course over to you ashwarya right indeed apart from from uttar pradesh all eyes are also going to be what happens in west bengal let's go across to anu divan anu speaking about west bengal uh, of course uh, we have seen how violence uh, has dominated uh, the entire uh, all the phases of uh, the elections uh, so far but uh, this time uh, the 
Election Commission has said that foolproof measures are in place. More than 700 companies of the paramilitary forces are going to be deployed in all the polling booths. Give us a sense of what is happening in West Bengal at the moment. Definitely, as well as seeing the first six phases, we have seen the incident of violence being increasing day by day and poll by poll, uh, sorry, phases by phases in West Bengal. But after that, it is taking a strict action on the increasing number of violence incident in West Bengal. Election Commission decided to cut short the campaigning, but after that also the cam uh, incident of violence didn't decrease, but it increased. We have seen in the uh, yesterday only uh, uh, a day before yesterday night, uh, cars of BJP leaders were attacked by some goons. They have reported to the Election Commission. Asked an inquiry from them and asked, and even asked for the flag march of the central paramilitary forces. But now, election commission has uh, prepared everything; is being prepared on the ground for conducting the polls, which is going to help tomorrow. That is the seventh phase on 19th of May. As uh, election commission has deployed around 710 uh, paramilitary forces, 710 companies of central forces, and with uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, measures taken to. Keep uh, keep eyes on the very critical polling booth with uh, flying squad, quick responses team, CCTV cameras, and other uh, other uh, measures needed to take care of the safety and security and each and every voter who comes to vote. And election commission is trying hard so that there is no fear among the people. No people come out and vote in large numbers because this seventh phase is really crucial and very important being the last phase. Election commission wants to assure people that uh, violence can be stopped if a measures can be taken. Although election commission has been trying hard to uh, to see that the no violence happens in the city. But, uh, uh, but there were some or the other things which, uh, uh, which have raised question on the preparations done by Election Commission. Although Mamta Banerjee, uh, we have seen on the ground Mamta Banerjee alleging central paramilitary forces that they have interfered in the work of the state government. But since the, it's a Lok Sabha election, it, uh, none of the uh, 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 Election Commission cannot uh, deny all these things but have to take care of each and every polling station and polling booth. And along with that, Ashwarya, uh, on 12th of May where the violence happened in the, in the Bankura parliamentary constituency, one polling booth will be also going for re-polling on 19th of May. Hmm. So seeing the situation there also, Election Commission is taking strict actions, is preparing hard so that none of the violence incidents happen and the seventh phase goes free and fair according to it. Election Commission is keeping eye on each and every political activity, each and every activity of right. uh, uh, of every citizen of uh, West Bengal, every uh, voter also so that because it's difficult to judge on ground that who can be a uh, uh, who can be the culprit Indeed. of the That's a huge violence. challenge so for, for the Election there. Commission Measures, but uh, it uh, has uh, ensured uh, the safety of uh, the polling booths in uh, West Bengal will have uh, central paramilitary forces. Uh, let's get an update on Punjab now. Our colleague Ravindra Singh Shoran is joining us uh, from uh, Anandpur Sahib. Uh, speaking about uh, the 13 seats uh, in Punjab that are going to polls in the seventh phase, uh, Ravindra, give us an update, uh, give us a sense of uh, how significant these seats are and uh, considering the fact that both the uh, sides uh, are claiming that they have an upper edge. Uh, of course, Amrinder Singh returned as the Chief Minister of Punjab in 2017 after decade the rule of uh, Shiromani Kalidal and BJP. And uh, that is how it is uh, looking uh, uh, confident. But BJP and SAD are also very uh, confident of their victory. Give us more updates. Good morning, Ashwarya. You are right. The decade-long old rule of the Shiromani Kalidal and the BJP combined, that is still one of the core issues of this election. The Congress party is again and again bringing the issues at the time when the Shiromani Kalidal was here in the government. And some of the decisions taken by the Kalidal government, BJP is bringing, the Congress party is bringing them to the core of the agenda of this election. In, uh, during the rule of the Shiromani Akali Dal, one was the sacrilege. Uh, the uh, sacrilege happened with the Guru Granth Sahib and that was the core issue the Congress party is trying to bring and making it at the center of the whole election agenda. On the other hand, Shiromani Akali Dal and the BJP combined, they are bringing the issue of 1984 Sikh Sikhroid. Remember Ashwarya, Punjab, the politics of Punjab has a big role. Religion has a big role to play in the politics of Punjab. And both the political parties are trying to play with the emotions of the people on the, on, uh, on the lines of uh, religion.
Also, the main uh, other important issues in Punjab are uh, the cotton belt. See, the, the Bhatinda, Muksar, Malot, Malwa, this is Malwa belt. This has been known as the cotton belt of uh, this country. All but right. now, for the last at least uh, three decades, the farmers are in complete distress hmm. and uh, they are uh, f f uh, facing a lot of problems. The Congress party at the time when they contest the elections of the assembly, they have... Uh, promised that uh, they will bring some good solutions for the uh, welfare of the farmers. But still, after two years of the rule, mm -hmm. the farmers are still in the deep distress. And we are hearing the news of farmer suicide very often. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sukhbir Singh Badal, the president of uh, Shiromani Akalidal, he is contesting from the Firozpur seat. And he is uh, fielded uh, against Sher Singh Gubhaya, who is a renegade from the Shiromani Akalidal and now contesting on the ticket of uh, the Congress party. This, uh, the neighboring seat of uh, Shiromani, uh, the Sukh Firozpur is Bhatinda, where Sukhbir's wife, the Union Minister Harsimrat Kaur Badal, is contesting. So, and uh, the more other important seats in Punjab are Anandpur Sahib, where we are, we are standing right now, where Prime Minister Sindhu Majra, the sitting member of parliament, is contesting against the former Union Minister Manish Tiwari. Hmm. Sunny Indeed, Deol is so contesting. That is, uh, these are the very significant seats uh, uh, where uh, uh, all eyes uh, will be as far as uh, the 13 seats of Punjab are concerned. I'd like to thank uh, all our reporters who joined us from the ground. Uh, thank you so much, Ravindra, who joined us uh, from Punjab. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Anu Devan, who joined us from Kolkata, and uh, also Akhilesh, uh, who joined us from Bihar. Thank you, all of you, for joining us. And let's get you some more election-related news. Uh, Bypools for four uh, Vidhan Sabha seats of uh, Tamil Nadu will also be held tomorrow. 63 candidates are in the fray for the assembly seats of uh, Sulur, Ota, Pidaram and uh, Thirupadakun. Bypools uh, to 18 uh, seats will be held on 18th of April along with 38 Lok Sabha segments in the state. Heavy deployment of around uh, 16,000 personnel has been ordered. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has arrived in Uttarakhand uh, on a two-day visit to the hill state. PM Modi will offer prayers at the Kedarnath Temple shortly. He will offer prayers at Badrinath then on Sunday. He will also review the Kedarpuri reconstruction project. PM Modi laid the foundation stone for the Kedarpuri reconstruction project two years ago. This is Prime Minister Modi's fourth visit to the state during his tenure as the Prime Minister. The centre has issued a drought advisory to Maharashtra, Gujarat, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Tamil Nadu asking them to use water judiciously. This as the water shortage in dams are dropped to a critical level. The total water storage available in 91 major reservoir in the country is 35.99 uh, billion cubic meters, which is 22% of the total storage capacity of these reservoirs. The figure was at 24% for the week ending on 9th of May. The drought advisory is issued to states when the water level in reservoirs is 20% less than the average of the live water storage figures for the past 10 years. Buddh Purnima, marking the birth anniversary of Lord Buddh, is being celebrated across the country today. According to the legends, all three major events of the life of Gautam Buddh, his birth, enlightenment, and Nirvana took place on this day in different years. The day is celebrated by Hindus and Buddhists across the world, especially in South and Southeast Asian countries, where it is celebrated as Vesak. Now, President Ramnath Kovind and uh, uh, all the leaders uh, have greeted people on the occasion. President Ramnath Kovind said that Lord Buddha's message of peace, non-violence and compassion holds even greater significance today. And in a Twitter message, Vice President M. Ankhya Naidu also said that Lord Buddha was one of the most illustrious spiritual leaders who preached the most profound truths. He said that Buddha's eternal message of non-violence and compassion continues to inspire humanity. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi also greeted the people on the occasion. He said that uh, Buddha's teachings of truth, non-violence, compassion and peace will keep inspiring people. 
The top international focus, Australians have begun voting on uh, Saturday in the first general election since political infighting ousted the nation's fourth leader in a decade. Prime Minister Scott Morrison's Conservative government is facing a close contest with the Social Democratic Australian Labour Party led by Bill Shorten. Prime Minister Scott Morrison says that he has united his Conservative government in the nine months since he replaced Malcolm Turnbull. Opposition leader Shorten is a former union leader who previously led his party to a narrow loss in 2016 but has remained in place since then. The nation holds elections every three years but no prime minister has succeeded in serving a full term since 2007. Australia has mandatory voting and a record 16.4 million enrolled voters. And surveys have shown that economy, cost of living and environment and health are the central concern for the voters. And now let's cut across to Kedarnath, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi is on a visit. All right, these are the live visuals uh, that we are getting uh, from uh, Kedarnath. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reached here. It is a two-day visit to, to Uttarakhand that uh, Prime Minister Modi is undertaking. And he is going to pay obeisance at Kedarnath and Badrinath shrines. Prime Minister Modi will offer prayers at Badri Nath tomorrow. First, he is headed to Kedar Nath. So, those are the live visuals uh, that we are getting from Kedar Nath, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi is undertaking a two day visit to the state. Today he will be in Kedar, uh, Kedarnath and thereafter on Sunday, that is tomorrow, PM Modi will be in Badrinath before he returns to Delhi on Sunday afternoon. All right, uh, those uh, beautiful visuals of uh, the shrine in Kedarnath, where Prime Minister Modi, you can see, he is going to offer prayers at the temple shortly. Apart from that, uh, apart from paying his obeisance, Prime Minister Modi will also review the Kedarpuri reconstruction project. Remember, it was here two years ago that PM Modi had laid the foundation stone for the reconstruction project in Kedarpuri. And Prime Minister Modi is a regular rather to the state of Uttarakhand. This is PM Modi's fourth visit to the state during his tenure as the Prime Minister. Remember, this is uh, this visit coming ahead of the final phase of Lok Sabha election. Though Election Commission has given not to PM Modi's two-day visit. Uh, to Kedarnath and Badrinath. Though it did remind the Prime Minister's office uh, that the model code of conduct is still in force. The PM's office had sought the views of the Election Commission on his visit and after getting a nod from the Election Commission, PM Modi has undertaken this two-day visit to the state of Uttarakhand. So you can see the entire cavalcade there. You can see PM Modi with his security walking all the way down to the temple. This temple has a special significance for PM Modi because this is his fourth visit to the state after assuming charge as the Prime Minister of the country. Now, this Himalayan shrine is dedicated to Lord Shiv. 
and it has been visited several times by Prime Minister Modi during his uh, term in the office. It was in November last year that PM Modi had visited the Kedarnath Shrine and uh, that was during the time of Diwali. Thereafter, in, uh, in, in 2017 as well, PM Modi had paid visit to the temple. In fact, uh, that year, PM Modi had uh, paid visit to the shrine twice. Once uh, in the month of May, after the shrine's gates uh, had opened. Remember, the shrine gates uh, are opened after a break. First, uh, after a break, uh, the doors are opened in the month of May. And after six-month break, in winter, again in October, the temple gates uh, are uh, closed then for winters. Talking about this year, the portals of Kedarnath Temple were uh, thrown open to pilgrims uh, on 9th of May. Of course, this coming after a six-month-long winter break. And uh, those live visuals there, you can see Priyam Modi interacting uh, with the officials there. He is going to pay obeisance to Lord Shiv at the temple shortly. And after uh, paying obeisance uh, in Kedarnath, PM Modi win, will then travel to Badrinath on Sunday. He will offer his uh, prayers there at the temple again. And uh, thereafter, in the afternoon tomorrow, he will return to Delhi. It was the last year in November that we had seen uh, those visuals there. PM Modi visited uh, Kedarnath then for the third time. And that was just before the closing ceremony of the temple. And now that uh, the gates are opened uh, to the public for paying their obeisance, PM Modi is uh, at the shrine once again. So, at the temple, PM Modi will do the darshan. This will be followed by a puja. And thereafter, he will uh, go for inspection. He will take a look at uh, the reconstruction works that were done. He will also hold a discussion with the officials over the construction works. And in fact, uh, arrangements uh, have been made uh, for uh, his night stay as well in uh, the Dhyan Gufa. Now, Dhyan Gufa is the meditation cave. And uh, on Sunday, PM Modi will take part in the morning puja and uh, he will then visit Badrinath temple for a darshan. And uh, then he will fly back to Delhi via Dehradun. So that is the entire itinerary. You can see those visuals are there a short while back when PM Modi's chopper had landed. He was escorted uh, to the temple by the security and uh, he is going to offer his prayers inside the temple in a short while. Election Commission has okayed PM Modi's Kedarnath visit, uh, though it has uh, reminded him of the poll code and those visuals there, PM Modi, to offer prayers.
those visuals you can see there of uh, inside the Kedarnath temple, a temple which is dedicated to Lord Shiv. This is uh, located in uh, Garhwal, Himalayan range uh, near uh, the Mandakini river. And uh, as uh, I've already mentioned, due to the extreme weather conditions, uh, the temple is open to general public only between the months of uh, April or May till November. And this year, the temple gates were opened uh, on 9th of May. And thereafter, PM Modi coming here and offering his prayers. Uh, you can see those live visuals.
रहा है वो चौरासी लाख योनियों का फेरा केदारेश्वर महादेव के दर्शन पूजन करने मात्र से नष्ट हो जाता है और वो जीव भगवान शंकर की समान गति को प्राप्त करता है ओम ब्रह्म मुरारे शुराचित लिंगं निर्मल भासित सोवित लिंगं जन्म जदोक्ष विनाशक लिंगं तत्रणमामि सदाशिव लिंगं देवगणा प्रवराचित लिंगं ओम तमहं नयामहेशुलिंगं शुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्धशुद्ध
there are also pony services uh, available. Those visuals earlier we saw Prime Minister Modi's uh, chopper landing and from there PM Modi took a uphill trek really from Gauri Kund. Now according to the mythology, the temple was uh, initially built by the Pandavas. In fact, it is one of the 12 uh, Jyotirlings, which is, uh, of course, uh, it is one of the holiest Hindu shrines of Lord Shiv. So, as the legend has it, the Pandavas were supposed to have pleased Lord Shiv by doing a penance in Kedarnath. And of course, uh, this temple is one of the four major sites in Chardham pilgrimage. And it is uh, the highest among uh, the 12 Jyotirlings. But what we have seen uh, since 2013 is a major reconstruction effort here. Remember, Kedarnath was one of the worst affected areas during the 2013 flash floods that happened. We all remember those dramatic visuals uh, when uh, the entire area was swept away by the flash floods. The entire temple complex also in fact uh, suffered huge damage. Surrounding areas also, even the Kedarnath town also had suffered extensive damage. However, the, in the, the main temple structure did not get any ma major da damage. And since then, huge reconstruction efforts are on. In fact, uh, two years back, PM Modi had come here and uh, he had, uh, in fact, inaugurated uh, those reconstruction efforts. And, uh, in fact, after paying uh, his obeisance uh, to Lord Shiv and offering prayers, he is also going to hold discussions with the officials about the reconstruction efforts that are on, about the reconstruction projects uh, here in Kedarnath. So those live visuals there of PM Modi. He is being garlanded. A tilak has been uh, smeared on his uh, forehead. So those uh, beautiful visuals there of the Garhwal Himalayan range, which is overlooking uh, the temple of Kedarnath, which is of course one of the most revered temples for Hindus. The, the temple is dedicated to Lord Shiv and uh, as I was uh, telling you earlier how in the 2013 flash floods, a lot of uh, structures near the temple were actually destroyed by those flash floods and but the main temple area did not suffer any major damage and after that uh, archaeological of india also examined the condition of uh, the foundation of the temple and they also came to this conclusion that there was no damage uh, really to the foundation. And in the, after that, the IIT Madras experts also visited the temple for the purpose. But the nearby areas had suffered huge damage and thereafter, great uh, reconstruction efforts are on. In fact, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been a regular visitor to this temple. As uh, the Prime Minister, he has visited uh, the temple four times already. Last year in November, he had uh, visited the temple before the gates were, open, uh, were closed. That was the 
November time during the time of Diwali and uh, again Prime Minister Modi is there he is offering prayers at the Kedarnath shrine and uh, tomorrow he will be traveling uh, to Badrinath and uh, will conclude his uh, two day Uttarakhand visit. In 2017 also, PM Modi had uh, visited the temple twice and uh, then in 2018 he had visited the temple in November. So those uh, visuals there you can see Prime Minister Modi coming out. He offered his uh, prayers at the temple. This year, the portals of the Kedarnath temple were opened to public on 9th of May. And uh, almost uh, 10 days later, 9 days later, PM Modi is there at the shrine offering his prayers. We are Modi there uh, coming out of the temple after offering prayers uh, inside uh, the temple. So inside the temple there is uh, this uh, presiding uh, the image of uh, Kedarnath in the form of Lingam. Then there is also the image of Parvati and the five uh, Pandav princes. And those visuals you can see PM Modi coming out of the temple after offering prayers. He is uh, greeting, his uh, hands are folded. And once again, bowing before the gods. PM Modi there waving as uh, he emerges out after offering his prayers at the temple. And he's taking that entire trek he's uh, also going to have discussions uh, with the officials regarding uh, the reconstruction projects that he had himself inaugurated. And that is the parikrama that he is doing around the temple. This temple has a special uh, significance for Hindus. It is uh, said to be the place uh, where Pandavs, uh, they build this temple. And uh, this is where uh, they have, they pleased uh, Lord Shiv by doing uh, penance in Kedarnath.
But apart from that, the temple is of course one of the four major uh, sites in Char Dham pilgrimage. It is uh, the highest among the 12 Jyotir links. In fact, uh, Lord Shiv uh, is also called Lord of Kedarkhand. So those uh, visuals from Kedarnath uh, Dham, located in Rudraprayag district, Uttarakhand. PM Modi they are waving, even as the chants of Bam Bam Bole, you can hear reverberating. Chants of uh, Bam Bam Bole there, even as uh, PM Modi waves uh, to the people. Now, Kedarnath is one of the most uh, paramount locations for worshippers of Lord Shiv. So the air uh, reverberating uh, with the name of Lord Shiv, Bam Bam Holi. You can see those mighty snow-clad peaks, enchanting meadows, and those uh, lower mountain range of uh, Himalayas. Indeed, a breathtaking location there. And PM Modi, you can see their visuals uh, reaching out to the people there who have gathered to get, catch a glimpse of their leader. He's waving to the crowds. Kedarnath Tham, uh, which is uh, one of the 12 uh, Jyotir uh, Lings most important temple among uh, the Hindu temples as far as the Lord Shiv temples are concerned. It is of course one of the most significant temples of the sacred uh, Chota Chardham Yatra in Uttarakhand. In order to reach the temple one has to take uh, about a uh, 14 kilometer trek from Gauri Kund. Though one can, of course, always uh, avail helicopters for the Yatra. There is a there is a very interesting uh, legend, uh, in fact, uh, behind the Kedarnath Temple, and that is uh, that after uh, the Mahabharat, uh, the Pandavas were burdened with the guilt of uh, killing their uh, brothers, their relatives, and they sought a uh, Lord Shiv to absolve themselves of uh, their sins. But Lord Shiv uh, did not want to release them uh, from their wrongdoing so easily. So the legend has, his, has it that he disguised himself as a bull to roam in Garhwal Himalayas. And uh, when 
Pandavas uh, discovered that Lord Shiv dived into the ground and they tried to catch him, but uh, they could only get a hold of the hump. And the other body parts of Lord Shiv came up at different places. And it is said that the hump of this bull was found in Kedarnath. So that is uh, the most uh, very interesting uh, legend behind the Kedarnath temple. And uh, the originally it is said that Pandavas uh, built the temple of Kedarnath. And uh, PM Modi, of course, uh, has been visiting uh, the shrine ever since he became uh, the Prime Minister. We had seen how he had undertaken visit uh, twice in 2017 and then in 2018 he was uh, here in the month of November during the time of Diwali and today again PM Modi is here offering his prayers and tomorrow he will be in Badrinath after concluding his uh, Badrinath visit he will return to Delhi. So PM Modi's uh, two-day visit to Uttarakhand there Tomorrow morning, he will offer prayers at Badrinath. And in the afternoon tomorrow, he will return to Delhi. Of course, this uh, visit of the Prime Minister coming uh, just a day ahead of the last phase of Lok Sabha elections. But uh, the Election Commission, uh, the PMO had sought uh, Election Commission's uh, permission. And the Election Commission, of course, uh, gave its lord uh, nod for uh, the visit because it is an official visit but at the same time it also reminded the prime minister's office that the model code of conduct is still in force so you can see that uh, cavalcade moving ahead uh, as uh, pm modi came and offered his prayers at the Kedarnath Shrine. The portals of the temple were thrown out open to public on 9th of May and today is 18th. Just uh, a week later, PM Modi visiting the temple and offering his prayers in the temple which is located in the Garhwal Himalayan range in Uttarakhand's Rudraprayag. And that's it in this special broadcast. We'll keep getting you all the updates on PM Modi's Uttarakhand visit. Thanks so much for watching.